pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021 and extended again by chapter two of the acts of 2023 this meeting will be conducted by a remote means members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner by emailing steve mccarthy at mccarthy s at amherstma.gov that's m-c-c-a-r-t-h-y-s at amherstma.gov no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post on the Amherst website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. And with that done, uh, we'll take a roll call of attendance. Dylan. Here. Hallie. Here. Gaston. Here. I'm here, uh, four here, one absent, um, that being Doug, and we'll go to public comment. Is there anyone here for public comment, general public comment, unrelated to anything on the agenda? Let's see, do we have any participants? Anybody there? For one attendee, C. Anderson, okay. If you do have a public comment unrelated to the agenda, just hit the raise hand button at the bottom of your screen. If not, okay, so we'll go on to the next thing, which is discussion topics, A, marijuana regulation. So um, I don't know if we want to do the conversation about the structure of the meeting or just uh, Gaston, did you wanna give us an overview of the document prepared? It was very helpful, thanks a lot. Uh Sure. Well, I guess what I would suggest, if uh, if it makes sense to everybody, would be if um, Steve could share that issues list, and um, I, I can explain how I set it up and um, and and how we might use it to organize our conversation. Okay, that's great. Steve, could you share the screen, please? Um, Does that you guys see that? Yes, uh, mm -hmm. great and um, perfect. You, if you you could even um, you know op uh, zoom in to fill the width of the page if you, if if you like or, or uh, but in any case, what I've done here is organize three sources of issues in a table, and the three sources are number one, the Worcester Ordinance, number two existing host community agreements in Amherst, and then number three, the uh, draft regulation that Doug drafted. And so what I, I thought we might do is kind of go through the issues one by one, and then in that last column, um, we can make some notes uh, that, that Steve might take down Basically, do we think that the issue is one that should be in a bylaw, or is it an issue that should be spelled out in a regulation, or is it an issue that we don't want to address, or that we wish to be able to address through our discretion? And then my, my idea is that when we go through the issues this way, we'll be able to say, okay, we want to cover these dozen issues in a in a bylaw we want to cover these other issues in a regulation and we want to be clear about our discretion to um you know address these other kinds of issues as uh the need may come up okay thanks sounds like a sounds like a good plan um and then yeah, and then let me just add where, yep. where, where a particular issue was addressed by more than one of these sources, uh, then you'll, you'll see that noted. So the first set of issues are coming from the Worcester Ordinance, but then I made cross references where that same issue is addressed uh, somewhere else. Um, in particular, a few of those issues were addressed in, uh, in Doug's regulation. So the first, the first big issue is what is the purpose of you know, either the bylaw or our, our regulating. And um, as you'll see, I think what's interesting is the way that Worcester frames that, um, and we can compare it to uh, what's in the current uh, draft that, uh, that, that, that Doug prepared.
Yeah, I think this is great. Thank you for putting this together, Gaston. I think this yeah. will be a good way to organize our thoughts on this. Yeah, it looks really good. So do you want to do just want to start at the top right now and go through it? Um, so there, did you go, the host community agreement page is, I mean, section is, is that to be filled out? No, that's, um, uh, it's, there's it's nothing it's, there. It's Oh, I no, see. I see. Oh, there are the numbers. Okay, right. Yeah, it, that gets addressed on the. Um, that comes next. I first did everything that's in the ordinance. Okay. In in the Worcester ordinance. Okay. Um, so I, um, I mean, I I guess we're kind of. Uh, I'm just relocating now to my office. Fist, 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 fist uh, to allocate these issues. Um, you know, and and decide what's important to us. And um, and where we think it, it fits, if it fits. Okay, great. Sounds good. Um, what does everybody think? Do we want to just start at the top or purpose of bylaw regulations? Yeah, I think we should yeah. start. With the... Okay, because I noticed like Doug's, uh, Worcester's looks pretty thorough and then Doug's is just defining the process process for renewal, which seems to be, that's more under regul more under regulations, right? Compared to what Worcester has. Yeah, I think, I think that's, I think that's right, Marion, that yeah. um, Doug, uh, but, you know, Doug emphasized a lot of the, those process issues that I think are for regulation, but he's also raising some substantive issues that, um, that I think we want to discuss. Um, oh yeah, definitely. I'm going to be set up in my computer in just a sec. So uh, okay. just give me give me a sec. Okay, sure. We can hold on. I mean, one one thing I'll note is that um, both the Worcester ordinance and the um, and Doug's uh, draft regulation assumed that the um, establishments in question would also have a host community agreement. Right. And and what I understand, Steve, is that when these expire, they're not going to be renewed if we have a, a licensing regime in, in place. Is that how you understand the, the idea? I think that is the intention. We'll have to see um, how completely practical that is, but I do believe uh, that is the intention. And um, I know there's some changes the state's making with host community agreements. So, um, you know, if the state mandates them, then we may just kind of pare down to a de minimis host community agreement. Um, but if we can get rid of them, I think the intention would be to replace them with these. Okay. Um, well, I mean, one question is, do we feel like we need to put um, a, a cap on the number of licensees? Um, my inclination would be no, as it's already covered by zoning. Yeah. Um, and especially since, um, I think at least I see Worcester has it non-transferable. I mean, I think we want to avoid the problems we come into with liquor license quotas, not as much in Amherst, but in other towns. And, um, if there was a cap and that would kind of lead to that, that problem, even indirectly, um, Okay, so uh, Steve, I wonder if I can ask you to make some notes as we're going through here. Yeah, uh, sure. I mean, I think on the purpose, we should come back to talk about that, but I think the answer there is going to be both, that we want to address that at both levels. Yes. Um, and, and you know, slightly differently, but maybe we should come back because that's going to be an interesting conversation. I, I do yeah. want to point out that Worcester identified a few different kinds of considerations, and I think they did a good job of spelling some of those out and we should try to do the same based on what we think is important. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, I'm, I think that on the next line, we've got a question mark based on, on what you've said, uh, Steve, on the, the host community agreement, uh, kind of to be determined maybe based on state law. Um, number of licensees, I think we're leaning towards um, uh, no. Um, uh, the age I should have said there, the age is of the licensee. And I assume that we also have 
uh, yes, like the, I mean, this seems like yes. And in the bylaw, I would think, right. The, the age of the licensee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now the age of the licensee, would that be every member of an LLC or every stockholder of a corporation or the manager? Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a good question. I think the Worcester ordinance was drafted as if there was a human licensee, but I, what I hear you saying is that we're, we're thinking of LLCs or businesses being the licensee. So, um, uh, maybe that's something to be, uh, uh, maybe no question mark. Um, I mean, sorry, the, the so age is a no question mark, to, to, uh, uh, well, I would mirror what ha what's what about what are the ABC regulations for an LLC holding an alcohol license? Do you have to be twenty? Do all the members have to be twenty one and older? That is a good question. I don't. Um, I think they have to be American citizens. I don't know if they all have to be over twenty one, but I could be wrong about that. I'd have to check. Because I would try to mirror on some of these like, okay. regulations mirror with the ABC. Yeah. Yeah. So, so say, so, uh, you know, conform to ABCC rules. Yeah. Transferable. That that seems like a pretty core core issue that would be in a bylaw. Um, but I mean, we could say kind of bylaw subject to regulation of commission. I don't know. Um, I don't know what, what scope we would have to adjust that principle. I mean, I guess we would be what we would be the ones to approve a transfer if, if it were to get approved. Uh, so maybe that is um, subject to regulations. I think it might be good to disambiguate transfers as in somebody else is buying an existing business and transfers as in I'm trying to buy somebody else's license because there's a scarcity. Okay. I think that, I think that here the issue in the, uh, I'm going to open it up, but I think the issue here is of the license itself. Um, so we could, we could add that to the, to the left column, Steve, let me double check it. Uh, yeah, that's the license in the Worcester, in the Worcester, um, yeah. Um, so I don't know if we want to, if we should have that flat rule of no transfer or transfer only subject to, subject to the, the, the board, the commission. Approval. I think you would want it to be subject to the board approval, yeah. but um, yeah. Yeah. I do think we just want to avoid the kind of quota system. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, okay. So then we can say, you know, put regulations there are subject to subject to commission slash regulations. Um, the posting of licenses, that seems very much like a regulation type mm -hmm. thing, not a, not a bylaw. Yeah. Um, the fee also seems for, for commission, yeah, regs or slash commission, um, um, school distance, um, now there's I, a common, I, yeah. I think the there's term. like a, yeah, there's a commonly, oh, sorry, term. Is there, I, I, is that in the, is that the, the CCC or is that already in the host community agreements? I didn't catch that. That's right. in uh, zoning as well. Okay. Yeah. I would maybe suggest leaving that in zoning. Then, yeah, that makes sense. Let's not, so just say, um, del, you know, zoning or whatever. Um, the, the emergency plan, I mean, I, I think it seems like the bylaw should maybe require it, but bylaw, you know, as specified by regulations. Yeah. Yes. The the um the SOPs is interesting because 
um, it wasn't specified in the in the ordinance what 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 is involved there, but it seems um, whatever it is would be for the commission uh, for commission. SOP. Stand, uh, as as stand, standard operating procedures. Oh, Got it's sort it. of like it's sort of like their management plan and the other. I licenses. think I think that that's the uh, hang on. Uh, uh, where where where? Let me see where I'm getting that from. Uh, before the security plan. Um, yeah, what they have is oh, it's uh, written operating procedures in accordance with, and there's a CMR section that I guess we should cross-reference here. Um, it's a 935 CMR 500.105. 100 uh, 500.1, sorry, it's 935 CMR and then 500.105. Yeah, okay. Um, security plan seems like for regulations. Um, uh, Worcester had these prohibited times. I don't know if, if we feel like there have to be prohibited times. Um, the permitted times are as specified on a license. So we would, it's the, the prohibited time kind of restricts the, uh, the discretion of the commission. I don't know if I don't, I mean, I, I guess I would defer to the town count. I mean, what, what, what do you think is our recommendation? Should there be uh, kind of officially off limits times? I think that I'm, I'm going to say, oh. go ahead, Dylan. I was going to say, I, I mean, I'm, I'm for keeping that just regs and giving us that flexibility um, to see what we do because it's the same we do with alcohol like if we if we wanted to make it 2 a.m could we or is that like something through a bylaw state law prohibits liquor license liquor being served between 2 a.m and 8 a.m either 8 or 10 i believe and then um the town can choose if they want to go up to two or not and i think amherst traditionally has it, although they're actually the uh, amherst college license is up until two um mm -hmm. but the new zoning bylaw says that right that they can only serve until 1 a.m but um, generally, the state law has kind of prohibited times, if you will. Um, mm -hmm. The uh, I mean, yeah, we're gonna have hit state, but um, is that like uh, for for liquor? Is that something that that is our discretion? Or you're saying that it's a bylaw that uh, regulates liquor till one? That's um, well, it's actually this. Well, the um, the Amherst don't the Amherst zoning bylaw just recently changed, and now it now it prohibits. Um, alcohol service after one although that only applies to things that are subject to zoning which things on uh college campuses aren't and um this only came into effect less than a year ago and i believe the amherst college swims pub as a license until 2 a.m wow. but uh, actually even there are even some um some bars which do not which do not have uh zoning permits that were done under the most recent zoning so theoretically that could the time could maybe be changed if it doesn't if, if the way there's zoning their zoning uh permit is written that it does not really touch on times theoretically you could go past that but it's it's covered in zoning so it's kind of a differently overlapping thing but the state law says there's no way you can go past two okay uh, i mean i i'd say my feeling on this one is just regulations because yeah if the if the town does want to adopt a bylaw or the state wants to prescribe it sure but otherwise I, I i always prefer the flexibility if somebody makes a good case for why it needs to be open at a certain time why don't we put we like have... state state law question mark on this line um on the prohibited times so we can kind of find out if there's anything um but otherwise it kind of just goes to the next line which is the license determines the permitted times yeah the, yeah. the, the next uh, row. Oh, what happened there? So the permitted times would be by, you know, commission, right? A commission to, to decide. Yeah. Um, also, I, my, my colleague did send me along the uh, age 
requirements for liquor licenses, and that is um, you have to, every partner has to be 21 or over. So, okay. <clears throat> um, so the um, the Worcester the Worcester law um specifies no consumption, and what I do want to uh, make sure we have on our radar, especially if we want to kind of start kind of being positioned to pave the way for um for uh, whatever like a cannabis cafes is what the um summit lounge in worcester has done and i i know that we looked at an article before but there's a an article from last summer that i think is or sorry last november i think is newer than than what we have um already looked at so i'm going to forward that article um, to, uh, to Steve, uh, maybe so that we can look at it, um, uh, the next time we talk, um, as we consider the possibility of, of, uh, 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 cannabis cafe. Is that the private club there? Yes. The, the summit lounge is the private club that is in, um, in Worcester and, uh, has, um, you know, they're, they're operating in a space that is, seems to be open. Um, the article frames it as open due to loopholes, but anyway, it's, it's a good source of both the considerations that, that they've, um, considered, but also the arguments for and against, um, uh, cannabis cafe. So may, maybe, we can come back to that. But here, the point is that the dispensaries have um, a kind of a no, no on-site consumption by the, um, by the Worcester ordinance. And so I, I, I guess that the question is whether um, we want to open the door uh, or to be poised, uh, let's put it that way, in case um, things uh, clear up a little bit more for cannabis cafes. I mean, I uh, go ahead, Dylan. I, I like the idea of being able to do a cannabis cafe. I guess the real question is how would we approach it by uh, a bylaw or regs? It seems like something that might have to be allowed by bylaw, um, but maybe regs. I don't know. What, what's your feeling on that one, Steve? Do you think that's something substantial enough that it should be a bylaw? I do. Th I think that the state law prohibits dispensaries from having any on-site consumption. Um, although the summit, or summit lounge or summit club is, um, that's an interesting case if it's the same one I'm thinking of, because yes. they were just a, um, private, private club. club that just, um, you know, like the VFW or something right. uh, with no liquor license, but they would just, um, you know, say, well, you know, smoking's allowed and smoke whatever you want. And, um, that was pretty much completely not subject to regulation then. And I don't really think there's anything that, that could be regulated about it, um, so if right. the same thing happened, excuse me, if the same thing happened here, say at the, what is it? The VFW is closed. What's the other one called? The American, American Legion. Legion. I mean, yeah. More complicated they, have, they, they get smoke license. in there, right? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. It gets it more complicated with a liquor license, I guess, because there are conditions that can be put on a liquor license, but right. it was just like, it's almost like an Elks club or something or where it was no, um, with no liquor license, just a private, private club. Um, so is that, I mean, is that something we should, you know, if it's Ill illegal by state law, then we can't put it in here, right? But if it's something that we have that is happening at, in the club in Worcester, should we not address that? I think, Dylan, you suggested this before uh, in our club regulations. Right. The but, uh, And just leave that. So, that but, that's so, kind of like the, the where we're flexible. So. so I know looking into this more uh, with club regulations, when it comes to a liquor license, then yes, they are being regulated. But right. like, it'd be like if, if you, if like me and you, Marianne, we were to rent out a space and just make it a, a private club and right. then, you know, we wanted to charge some monthly admission to people who want to, you know, help us rent out this space or what have you, you know, nobody can really come in and, and regulate what we do in this area. We're just renting out as kind of our, our hangout spot. Um, so in that way, I, I think 
we really can't do anything about it. And I, I really don't think, you know, when you, when you kind of think about it like that, that we would want to do anything about that. Um, right. But I think that, it's just, yeah, itself, kind of out of our. Right. That would be addressed by the person who's renting this, the space, right. In the agreement, like yeah, you're renting, you can't do this, this here. We allow. So that's more of a, a private agreement. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, right. How about we just say, uh, which is, uh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I, I just don't think it's one that um, would really have to, uh, would really have to uh, concern us. I think this is on the condition that uh, should the state allow for cafes, you know, do we want to be in a position to say, you know, have already, my thinking on this one is that should the state allow for it, I would like to see Amherst in a position to, you know, that, that we as a commission and a board has already thought this out. And it's not something that's being just kind of thrown at us that we got to deal with because it's like we're talking about it now. We could deal with it now and kind of right. figure out if the state says no and that just happens for the next 20, 30 years. And then we're on the commission, we wrote some, you know, bylaws or regs just in case, you know, whatever. But if it if it does come to fruition that we already have something in place that defines how we would want to go about it, I think would be a, uh, a good idea uh, should the state allow for um, cannabis cafes. Oh yeah, I do. I do agree. It's good to be prepared. But um, so, uh, how about yeah. we say uh, kind of bylaw slash TBD slash C private clubs? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess I would maybe just suggest taking a step back that um, you know, no, no commercial on-site consumption without a license, and if you know. And that may, even with the cafes, that may still be kept separate from dispensaries, like a package store, you can never drink there. But, um, right. I mean, the board would may not even have to take take really a position on it. I mean, theoretically, if the state allowed that, you could get multiple licenses, but. Um, so maybe we could put like that in no on-site consumption in dispensaries, but for future, whatever guest on said TBD yeah. clubs so that we can um, we can talk about I mean, it yeah my, my my vision from here is that we've kind of given a roadmap for right i mean i guess dylan was the one volunteering to to put in some energy here um uh um to kind of run with the, these kind of gu the guidance that we're creating here yes start assembling the the documents um licensing of employees it's interesting to note that um the 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 Worcester ordinance actually kind of ha uh, requires employees to have this valid marijuana establishment registered agent card um, that's done by the CCC. I I don't I actually have to double check. I don't I don't think the host community agreements had that. Um, but um, and and Doug's regulation addresses training in section 15, but doesn't specifically require this. So I, I don't know if we know, but it seems like maybe this can go in the um, regulation. I, I don't know if it's bylaw or regulation. What do you guys think? I mean, I would um, say training as specified by the regulations. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if the CCC simply requires that all employees have this already and the Worcester ordinance was just restating that I, I don't understand that yet yeah I don't know um I guess I have the same questions Gaston I also don't know what categories of employees would need that I don't know if it would just be the sales people and the managers or if the janitor would need that too mm -hmm. um, and I think this also brings up kind of a bigger question which is often something you run into in local regulation is does the does would the board want to restate everything that's in the no. state law or just, you know, assume yeah. that um, state law covers what it covers and the board just focuses on what, what's important to it. Uh, yes, I, I agree. So I, I looked it up and, and um, I think we should say, you know, um, by regulation, comma, C, and I'll give you the, um, I'll give you the, 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 the section reference, Steve, it's um, 935 CMR 500.2. 030. Um, 
<laughs> compliance with law. I mean, that's a give. That's a gimme. So um, I, I I assume that that can be in the bylaw. I mean, it's just kind of um, standard language. Um, notice the Worcester ordinance gives the commission very broad rulemaking authority. It says any rules and regulations it deems necessary to implement the section. I mean, that um, that is a good you know, broad um, uh, delegation of authority. It's consist, well, you know, Doug was very expansive in, in his authorities, um, but uh, I, I think something like this is is gonna be appropriate in the bylaw. I mean, we might tinker with the language, the town council may have its own ideas, but we need something like that in the bylaw for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, inspection rights, I, I don't know if, I mean, I guess, maybe that's bylaw worthy. What do you guys think? I mean, it's, um, this kind of goes towards the safety plans and so on, but, um, I mean, that, might, that could be in the license too, though. I mean, okay. I don't know. What do you guys think? I mean, that I would say license, but Okay. Yeah, I guess I guess the the bigger question is, do we want any kind of um, specific operational stuff in the bylaw at all, or really just kind of the authorization of the of the entire? Um, yeah, I mean that that could be just like the board of like the town council authorizes the board of license commissioners to do mandate these things. So, I mean, I guess in yeah. in you know the reality is, I mean, as I would imagine you the inspect the the department of inspection the police department and the fire department don't need an additional source of authority to inspect these establishments do they mm -hmm. i think it would be good to put in i think something like that is in the host community agreements as well as so like i could be wrong okay, okay. well we'll see in uh, the, the we'll see in a sec what's what's there um um as we scroll down so i mean uh, maybe we can just put question mark for now to, to sort it out. Um, violations. I, um, so what, you know, they're, the bylaw is putting a cap on, um, on what the commission can, um, the penalties that the commission can assign. I, I mean, I guess we may not want to argue for having these caps, um, but to leave that in the regulation, um, I guess the town council may wish to impose caps. I don't know what you all think about that. And and you'll be able to see what Doug is proposing when we when we scroll down a little bit. I mean, I'd be inclined to put as much as we can actually in the license and regulations instead of the bylaw. Mm -hmm. If we ever want to amend it, we don't have to go through town council. Okay. I'm inclined to agree with you, Hallie. I do think that with, with the violations, I think you have to put something about the um, non-criminal disposition, the way it's enforced in the bylaw. Um, but we can probably just check in with council on exactly what needs to be in there. I don't know if the numbers would need to be in there. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Um, so what we're now shifting, so, you know, the term sheet up till now has everything that's in the Worcester ordinance. So ho hopefully you found that a little easier to, to think about what's coming next are the issues that I, um, kind of pulled from the host community agreements. And what I've done is just kind of identify the issue in the left column. And then if you, you know, those footnotes, take you to the back of the document where is the actual text that I had circulated um, uh, a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but the policy issues for us are, um, you know, to what extent do we want to perpetuate some of the commitments that the town had included in house community agreements? The first one on this list is uh, hiring and sourcing locally, so both employees and um, and procurement. Uh, 
Is that um, something we really can do through uh, regulation? Well, it's you know it's not a requirement. The... If if uh, uh, Steve, if you double click on that number two, it'll take you to the language. This is the language from the from host community agreements to give you an example. So it's it's um you know it's efforts. It's a best efforts type of requirement, which I think probably is um within our authority to to say that you should make these best efforts clearly it's a very difficult um uh requirement to enforce other than inviting a um a licensee to come and explain what their hiring practices are and we could be like wait but what are you doing to try to hire locally and they could say uh nothing or we're doing this so that's how we could i think legitimately influence this but it still begs the question whether we want to um kind of reassert this policy objective that was included in uh several of the host community agreements well this is that's something like we do with the lunch the food trucks right where we encourage the 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 fuel source and then we it and that's written in the regulations and then reiterated when we talk to the licensee the license application and that is something we could do Correct. Certainly, certainly, I think it's in our I think it's in our authority, as as I understand it, to um, establish this best efforts kind of commitment. Okay. I think the question is just do we do we want to reaffirm this policy choice that was reflected in the host community agreements? I mean, I'm, I'll, I'll say I, I like keeping it in there, uh, the way that it's worded. It's just, yeah, that conversation, kind of what we would like, um, but it's not tying anybody's, uh, not tying our hands or any applicants. So I don't see, I, I, I think the general idea of it is, is good. I like it. I'd say keep it. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. I think we should keep it. Okay, so that's that's going to be. Um, I mean, it seems like probably something for the regulations rather than the bylaw. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, Steve, why don't we actually take advantage and just scroll down from there because it's just the same issues. So, um, uh, you know, the next set of things are reporting requirements, um, and so again, we could just basically take the same reporting requirements from the HCAs and, and tinker with them. Um, it does seem to me like something that would go in the regulation rather than the bylaw. Yes, I think keep it in the regulation. It didn't really seem like any of these, just looking at the the broad list there, like any of them would really be appropriate in the bylaw instead of regulation. Okay. I guess the question is just yeah. which one's the town we want to keep. Okay. Okay. I mean, well, yeah. Reporting ones seem a little onerous compared to what we ask um, liquor licensees to provide us. We, you know, I'm just, I'm just trying to compare what we regulate and to keep it sort of. Yeah, I, I understand. Yeah, I, I agree, and yet I think it just is because it's a little different. I mean, I'm not sure how to talk about it yet but it's just like it, it has a thing where it's medically sold and then recreationally sold and that's a little bit different from alcohol i think and i'm not sure what that you know what, what the difference should make practically yet but um i guess i just like to think have a little more time to think about it um why don't we make the note then kind of uh regulation slash um conform to liquor you know conform, you know conform to alcohol yeah uh, so that one i think we said yes we you know regs um uh regs you know so, yeah and some of that could be on the renewal yes yeah as well kind of the um, annual reporting requirements while we're here i think without you know we'll we'll um uh i think the next one is regulations on both of those by the way um we not only have the host community agreements as a source of language, we also have um, what Doug has put together and I have the section references there to Doug's um, bylaw. 
the 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 issue about marketing that next one that that Steve noted we can go down and see the language in the HCAs um this one i mean i think it's interesting but again it's not something we're requiring of the liquor and i don't know if this was actually done at all so i, I what i what i think we don't want to reaffirm are practices that weren't actually followed in the last few years. And I'm I suspect I'm wondering if the marketing is one of those that didn't actually get followed, but I I I am ignorant uh, about it. So I I it's kind of a policy question and 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 what you what how how relevant you all think it is whether these things were done or not. Yeah, I I really I don't know. I don't know if I know I know physical marketing like signage would be covered by zoning as well already. Okay. I think that this clause purported to be broader, um, but I, I, yeah, I mean, I think it purported to be broader um, and there's even a whole sentence, especially about edibles, which I don't, I mean, so I, I don't know, I, I guess I'm kind of seeing this as, a, for me, it's like a question mark, but if it goes anywhere, it would seem to go in the regs, but I don't know if it should, I don't know what you guys think. Yeah, it should go in the regs. Okay. I think. Um uh, the Okay, then public health educational efforts. I don't believe this was ever done. Okay. So it, you know, that also sounds like something that would go. Yeah, these in I an think annual these report would be, these or would be regulations, and then yeah. yeah, do we do we think that they're worth kind of re reasserting these um, these uh, commitments? I'm um, um, the, the diversion does seem to be important. Um, you know, it's it's something that comes up in numerous places. There are, I mean, there are some good ideas in there. Mm -hmm. Are we talking about six or seven here? Uh, uh, seven. Well, both, both, I guess, but yeah. yes, seven just now. Diversion program, is that something like a, uh, what is that, like a dare kind of thing? I, I think it's the concern um, about, um, um, it's, it, I think it's the concern about, um, Somebody um, buying somebody yeah. buying the product, the product, yeah, and, and like it, to it going else. to someone else who wasn't yeah. licensed or to an adult. Got it. This okay, like and it seems mistitled to me because it's more just like a diversion for prevention plan than like a town diversion program that's being supported. Yeah. So patient, do you want to? Might be good to change the word patient in a lot of these sections too. So that is that, wait, just can you go back there? Is it just for the medical or recreation? Is I think it's for recreational too. And the to recreational really, too, I, okay. The, Although it seems like it's pretty much written for medical because it's the medical yeah. acronym. You could say, you know, patient or, I don't know. Customer. Yeah. Customer. Six strikes me as a little bit questionable. Seven, um, I think, is, is is good with a little bit of, with some terminology changes, maybe changing the title because it's a, uh, 
it's not really the town program. It's really their own policy. Right. And is that something that would be required under the the S was it standard operating procedure? SOP? Yeah, that seems like it could be combined. What do you guys think about this one? I mean, again, well, you know, it's in the skit. It's kind of, kind of a, a hortatory principle. I, I, um, I, I, I. It seems reasonable to me. I would change the where it talks about town to the commission. That I guess that that would be my take. Mm -hmm. I mean, what's the? What do we think is the actual? Uh, I don't know, use of this going to be like, do we think that uh, a resident is going to come to us and make a complaint about a, um, <clears throat> about a license holder? And then are we, is this just give us the authority to, to ask him to come before us to address the complaint? Like what's, what's kind of the mechanism that this would be used in? Oh, you mean sort of like a hearing? Like that's what I understand. Yeah, sort of like, and what would be we might, the use? Yeah, we might wind yeah. up with with rental in the future. Mm -hmm. And also, it's an avenue for, I suppose, residents to raise concerns and have a voice in the whole thing. So, I guess regulation, or do we need something in the bylaw giving us the authority to do that? No, I, I mean, I, I think it's regulation, if any, but uh, Dylan, did you have thoughts about whether, oh, yeah. I mean, you know, it seems kind of implicit whenever we're licensing anyone that we can call them in, but um, mm -hmm. is it worth spelling out any of this? I think is, it doesn't have to be its own separate item. I think it could be wrapped into the license at some point. Because I mean, I guess I guess this is specifying. Because obviously, if you know, I think we're we're going to talk about, or we we've already talked about a little bit of how we handle violations, and obviously we're going to be defining those procedures more thoroughly. But this section is really just <clears throat> if maybe they're not making any violations, um, but they're causing some grief among neighbors. This is really the the mechanism in which to address that specifically. Like, I, I don't know, maybe people are, are buying marijuana, walking right over to the sidewalk and then smoking it and it's aggravating neighbors. Like, I don't know, that's not necessarily a <clears throat> violation that they're doing because now they've purchased it, they've left the premises and now they're, those people are just committing their own crime of smoking marijuana in public. But, right. you know, maybe the, the residents might want to bring that to our attention. Mm -hmm. Is that is that something that we... Do we care to have something like that in here? Um, <clears throat> I don't think it's necessarily a bad idea, but yeah, I, you know, I, are I, we just over engineering something? I I I think I I, I think that this is um, valuable in kind of spelling out the 
the intention of this kind of collaboration and but i would yeah just couple it with wherever we are clear in the regulations about being able to call the licensee in to talk to us okay I think it, yeah, I mean, I guess it falls into kind of the spirit of, of what we're trying to do in other places, like with the, you know, sourcing locally, like, we're not saying you must do this or lose your license, but like, hey, if, if neighbors are complaining about you, maybe you're not violating uh, something in the regulations, but, you know, we, we, we'd want to talk to you about it before we go ahead and change the regulations kind of thing. Okay. But yeah, I guess in that spirit, I, I think I support something like this in there. I think it makes sense. Okay. So regulations. Um, yep. Is there anything more below this, Steve? Oh yeah. Um, this this um these are details about um the emergency plan and so on. That I mean I don't know if this is the right drafting, but it's clearly it seems like something for the for the regulations. Um, and then the the I, I included the community impact fees annual contribution just because we're going to have to come up with a dollar value for the license, and we can look at the the way that the fees were being justified in the host community agreements. Okay. The, um, Steve, the, this contribution from the host community agreement, didn't that get uh, severely reduced by the CCC or? Yes, it did. I believe that? there's a, I think it was a legislation that reduced it already. And then the CCC I've heard is also coming out with um, further changes to it shortly. Um, I think this is the last um, item that I included for reference from the host community agreements. And then the rest is basically just um, helping us see what was in Doug's draft. Um, and by the nature of the document, what Doug drafted is very much regulation material because he was drafting a regulation. Um, we could talk about some of the substantive issues raised by his draft. I, I think that um, in some sections, his drafting is a, a little bit, gives us a little bit too much power, um, to be honest. Um, um, and so I, I would consider changing some of the drafting, but I think that he's given, he's created the document that can be the basis for the regulations that we need to come up with, um, weaving in what we think from the Worcester should go in there and and what we think from the HCAs should survive. Uh, so that's what's coming. We can go through them point by point now if, if, if we like to just kind of have some meeting of the minds about what's in there and what how we think things should actually work. Um, okay, it's five of 10. Does anyone, what's everyone's time like? We wanna do this now or? I'm getting closer to when I, I yeah. have to uh, wrap up. I've still got a little bit more time though. Why, why don't we maybe take time now to just talk about what we want to have as follow-up steps and before okay. we, we spend too much time talking about this. Okay. Uh, do we want to you, yeah. public comment at some point? Oh yeah, what, we could do that now. Okay. Uh, is there anyone here for public comment? I see one attendee. If you have public comment, please raise your hand and Steve McCarthy can let you speak. Right. No. Okay. Okay. I guess no public comment. Um, I, um, um, you know, the, um, the part of this that's going to require more work, we can see based on what we wrote in the last column, is going to be the regulation. Mm -hmm. um, the bit of it that would be the bylaw is pretty is relatively straightforward. 
I'm I'm happy to kind of take some lead in the bits that we think should go in the bylaw because to be honest, the Worcester ordinance does a pretty good job. So it's that's not a very heavy lift. Um right. the the regulation is going to be the heavier lift. Um and so that's I'm happy if Dylan is still uh volunteering to take take a lead on on working on that document and I'm happy to support, but I'd rather not be taking the lead with that. Yep for it, Dylan. Yeah. I think so. I uh, I know the next uh, between now and I think the next time we'd want to meet. I know I'm going to be busy, very busy, but I think I'll be able to get uh, a little bit of it done between now and the next time we get going. At least get into some more preventable, uh, presentable form based on kind of what we've talked about here. Um, so yeah, I am definitely up for that. Okay, great. Uh, Thanks. <clears throat> and then if it's it's me and Gaston, who knows? Maybe you can uh, me and you can go collaborate, Gaston, and uh, get a get a writing session. <laughs> At that, some that, point. Would, that that's that would be good that's I, I get motivated with that perfect all right fantastic um so did we want what's sorry, the next just, date that we have on let's let's agree about when we want to do this again so the next can. date we have so we've got a meeting tuesday the 17th and then the next date for this um i think part of the issue was we were we have this existent extent subcommittee that we're not sure we want to keep. So, and then we thought that just doing a meeting uh, like this every other week at five on Thursday at the same time might work might work well. And just, uh, Steve, you, you said that there were some issues about open meeting and the subcommittee, right? The open meeting law and that you were a little worried about. Yeah, so I did look into that. So <clears throat> I don't believe there's anything explicitly wrong with having a five member subcommittee although i would still probably advise against it because it just leads to more um confusion with with posting for us and the public um and they won't have any different quorum requirements anyway um so we can certainly just post meetings like this where this is the only real topic on the agenda mm -hmm. so is that time the question is is that time going to work let's say on the 24th. So I know summer is a different thing for mornings, but like once the, the fall starts and school starts, it's going to be um, difficult for me yeah. to do a morning meeting. The, uh, I mean, I'm going to, I'll put it out there because we're talking about this specific issue. And I think if we, um, if we really are just focusing on this one issue in a couple of meetings, I think we can kind of get this done in a, a much more reasonable time frame of something okay. like I, I think we're talking, you know, before the end of the year, I think we could probably be wrapped up with this uh, issue requiring its own meetings, I should say. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I'll put it out there like if, if people even want to do something like a weekend day for a little bit here, uh, I'd be into that. I just know this is something I want to give focus to. And it's just uh, when we're in the daytime like that, it's just, it's just whether or not I can make it is then questionable. And then if I have to be in the car as well, it's okay. just so distracting to be focusing on the road and trying to contribute meaningfully to these discussions. Um, right. So that's my take. I don't know how everybody else feels about that. Okay, so uh, just practically, like for the next for upcoming weeks, like we have the meeting set Friday, Thursday, the seventeenth at five is our regular meeting. The next Thursday is the twenty fourth at five o'clock. I mean, it might be that we just have to find a time week by week that works for everybody. I won't be able. I won't be here on the twenty fourth. Um, but I, as long as there are three people, it's fine. I I will be here on the twenty fourth. You won't. I will. Oh, you will. Okay. If we want to, I'll uh, put it out for these meetings here. I mean, we could just do every time we meet, we then just pick the next meeting time sometime uh, where we can all make it. Uh, how, how would people feel about something like a, a Sunday morning at some point? Do, do we like that or do we hate that? Um, I can't do Sunday mornings. Um, okay. But I can do, I could potentially do I don't know, weekends are generally not so great for me. Mm -hmm. um, a Saturday might work. Yeah. I work Saturday mornings, unfortunately, oh, okay. and I work earlier on Saturday mornings. Uh, Sunday is my only consistent day off. Right. Um, 
but I could do any weekday uh, this is at like an 8 a.m., 9 a.m., or not any weekday, Monday, Tuesday, Fridays, I could do uh, you know, mornings if we want to get together. I don't know if that works for anybody else. Are the um, alternate Thursdays not um, not being considered anymore? Or? Thursday. So Thursday at five is no good for anyone. I mean, Dylan, you're because you're taking it, they having a big role in this. So yeah, it's uh, it, it's not that I can't do it. It's that I I can't commit to doing it. Um, okay. Because it's yeah, if I if I you know if I'm in an appointment that goes till six o'clock or three o'clock, that isn't that's just not uncommon. And then even uh -huh. if I don't have that, I have a six o'clock appointment, and it just can make it uh make it difficult to uh, consistently make these times. Okay, so what if we did like you suggested earlier, week by week, like next week, what is mm -hmm. what can you do, or what can everyone do? Uh, how do people feel about for this this topic here? Because we've got a little bit uh, ahead of us. What are people looking like mornings in September? Because I know I go camping after because we have a regular meeting next week, and then I go camping the week after. Um, okay. So then I would be we're we're into September at that point. Can anyone do a September morning? I don't. I actually honestly don't know yet. Um... Um, so what about the week of the, so that you're doing camping the 20th through the 26th, you're going to be away. What about the week mm -hmm. after that? Cause we don't have a meeting, a regular meeting. That's the 27th through the 31st. Is there anything going on or this, the 27th through the, the 2nd of September? Oh, that, that is the week that I camp. Oh, it is week, but the 24th. Yep. Um, so from the. August 27th to uh, September 2nd is when I'll okay. be gone. Um, but the, the 20th through the 26th that we do you have a. I mean, we've got a regular meeting there and we could meet on this issue, but I, I don't think, you know, I, I, I will have made any substantial uh, oh, okay. efforts into the, the regulations by then. We could not also put this out there, too. Um, we could oh, just God. keep with the regular meeting. And should we decide that we need another one of these meetings specifically for this issue? Because it sounds like now we've really gotten the roadmap. Right. Um, of what we want to do here. So I think, Steve, is our regular meeting on the 17th and not the 24th? Our regular meeting is this week, yep. It's this week, okay. So we have we have a meeting Thursday and then no meeting the week after that, but you don't that won't be enough time for you, Dylan. So, um, and then the 20, 27th, you're out of town. Mm -hmm. And then we go into September. And um, the 31st, we, we do have an extra Thursday this month. There's a 31st. Will that give you enough time? Or do you have, or is I'll that be the week still, still camping then. Oh, yeah, you're away. That's, that's okay, so Dylan's camping. not here that week yep. and won't have a, okay. How about um, a preliminary report on the 7th at our regular meeting? Okay, sounds Love good. It. And then that we works. can go from there. Cool. Okay. Excellent solution. Thanks, Gaston. Okay. All right. Great. I, okay. I'd, I'd request to end here if we can. Yes. All right. And so just yep. to clarify, we are not going to meet on the 24th then. Correct. Okay. So we have a meeting on Thursday, the 17th, no meeting on the 24th, no meeting on the 31st, and then preliminary discussion on September 7th at our regular meeting okay. at five. All right. And uh, do we need a motion to adjourn? Let me just say, I, I, oh. I, um, I do not expect to be able to make it this Thursday. Um, okay. FYI for quorum. I'll be on okay. the Okay. Right. Oh, and Thanks. you know what? Before we leave, do we want to acknowledge the public comment we got via email? Just. Oh, yes. We did yeah. get a public comment um, from uh, what was the... uh, Renata Shepard? Renata Shepard. So, what do we need? Do we need to read that out or couldn't put hurt. it in the minutes? What is the best policy for that, Steve? Uh, I think one, one comment certainly couldn't hurt to read it out. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to read it or should I read it? Uh, if you have it up, I can I can pull it up if not. Yeah, why don't you pull it up? I don't have it with me. Uh, I, I got it. Do you want me to read it? Sure. sure. All right. So we have, um, this was from Friday, August 11th, uh, 2023 at 9.53 a.m. to Steve McCarthy. It's uh, Dear Board of Licensing Commissioners. 
I see you have marijuana regulations on your agenda. I don't know if I'll be able to attend your meeting live, so I'm sending this email instead. My family is very concerned with the way marijuana is normalized in our society. We are very much in favor of its medical uses and agree it is a good option to other uh, pharmaceuticals. However, it is still a drug and should be treated as such with prescription, safety measures, and warnings. <clears throat> Having a dispensary at every corner and rampant use everywhere gives our younger residents the impression that it is of no consequence. The same way smoking is now frowned upon and public drinking is against the law, why would marijuana use be any less harmful and regulated? You can't even share ibuprofen without fear of unintended consequences. Our schools and government are turning a blind eye to this public health crisis. So many marijuana users disregard its harmful effects, such as brain cell loss and diminished capacity, and even drive under its influence, putting other people in danger. Please take these concerns into account when dealing with license and regulations for something that should be treated as a drug. You wouldn't allow recreational use of cough syrup, so why marijuana? Please don't let the tax money it brings to town be the determining factor in your decisions. It is still drug money. Thank you, Rada Shepard. Um, Thank you, Dylan. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything else we need to do? Uh, I was just gonna say next time Doug is here, maybe we could remind him that there is that pot of money for the schools to possibly use in drug prevention education. Because I'd hate to see that just kind of sit there and not be used. Right. OK. Yeah, I think thanks for, for bring, keeping our attention on that, Hallie. I think we should at least try to connect with whoever's making decisions about it over the course of this process. And yes. I know like PGOs sometimes sponsor events, and that might be I don't know. I mean, Steve, I don't know what the process is for community members or groups to access those funds, but just, you know, when we get a public comment, I always like to acknowledge it. Absolutely. I think it's well, good. No, we're, it. we're listening. Yeah. So. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I think that was, thanks so much for, yeah, reminding us to do that. Very important. Um, okay. Anything else? Move to adjourn. Thank you. Second. Second. Thank you, Dylan. Um, I'll take a vote. Dylan. Aye. Hallie. Aye. Gaston. Aye. And I vote aye. That is four to zero with one absent. We're adjourned at 10.09 a.m. 10.09 a.m. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. See you on Thursday. Okay. Bye. 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 Yeah.